China is on a path to become a high-tech superpower. From AI to high-speed rail to fighter jets, China is catching up with and in some places surpassing its rivals. But China has not had success in commercial aircraft. Despite massive state support, China's alternatives to Boeing, Airbus and others have gone nowhere fast. China's record of frustration goes back decades. In the 1970s, China developed and then mothballed the Yunshu jet. And in the 1980s and 90s, China collaborated with McDonnell Douglas on a plane. But that joint venture collapsed because there were accusations that the Chinese were diverting technology to their military. In 2015, COMAC, which stands for the Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, came out with a regional jet, the ARJ-21, but it's not worked out well at all. Boeing is able to produce anywhere from 50 to 60 737s a month. And COMAC has only been able to produce 38 ARJ-21s in the last five years. Independent observers say the ARJ-21 is poorly designed and regularly suffers from mechanical problems. Things aren't any better with the C919, which is COMAC's narrow-body jet that's meant to compete with the A320 and the 737 from Airbus and Boeing. The C919 had everything going for it. Xi Jinping is a huge supporter. COMAC has received at least 45 billion in state funding. That's double what the WTO determined Airbus received over many years. Because of China's political environment, they've been able to have China's airlines line up to order hundreds of the planes. Air traffic in China is growing quickly, and so the C919 could be hugely profitable and cement China's place as a high-tech giant. But despite all the power and money behind this project, China's airlines don't actually want the C919. And with good reason, it's a plane with a tremendous amount of problems. It's already five years late, and it's unclear when it'll actually be delivered. It's also not as fuel efficient as the A320 or the 737 from Airbus and Boeing. In addition, it's not really even a Chinese plane. Everything that keeps it in the air, all of the important parts are from the United States and Europe. The reasons for China's aviation struggles aren't surprising. First. Planes are technological marvels. There's nothing harder than building a commercial aircraft except building a thousand of them. And they each have to be identical, reliable, and safe. Second is China's work environment. COMAC is a state-owned enterprise and it's also affiliated with China's Air Force. That makes it doubly hard for COMAC to seamlessly collaborate with thousands of domestic and foreign suppliers. And a complex, secretive bureaucracy is not supportive of innovation, to say the least. Finally, the C919 hasn't been certified yet, even by China's own domestic aviation authorities, let alone the FAA of the United States, which is the gold standard for aviation safety. China's aerospace sector has a lot of catching up to do. Despite all of the state support that they've received, they are nowhere closer to catching up with the United States than they were decades ago. China is also trying to co-develop a wide-body jet with Russia, the CR-929. But that plane is still on the drawing board, and it may never be built. The gap between the U.S. and China is not narrowing. China will need to import planes for many, many years. China is still 
trying to catch up on the technologies of today and even yesterday while the U.S. is focused on the technologies of the future like supersonics. Supporting America's aerospace sector is also important for our national security. And with continued investments in R&D and manufacturing, the U.S. can stay several steps ahead of the Chinese and anyone else who would seek to challenge it for years to come.